add the fourth, if you added a fourth exam, like there would be that much, like you probably don't have any chapter four stuff on this test. Sorry, this. Nope, it's not my Sorry. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Eight out of fifteen on prompt two. Oh, I had the right method. Fuck that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm ready to ask twenty nine. I'll come to you. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I'm going to go over the exams problem. Do you have any questions before we start? Number one. Number one. Yeah, we go. Yes. We are given with the airplane string gear mechanism. Uh, this is a model for that, that you can see that. So if we were asked to, to derive the equation of motion first and then find the natural frequency of this system. Um, so it's a one degree of freedom system. What we need to find is the potential and um, Kinetic energy of this system should be calculated. Half of 
k to r plus k1 times k chi squared. And similarly here, if I plug in x theta by <coughs> r theta dot, I will get half of m r squared theta dot squared. So if I add them up, I will get half of m r squared. Uh, plus j dot theta dot squared. Now add them up as half of m r squared plus j dot theta dot squared plus half of this. Now differentiate this with respect to time. This term will be constant, this term at the end of time, this term are constant, so we should just differentiate this with respect to time. Half of m r squared plus j naught at two times theta dot multiplied by what would be the derivative of theta dot with respect to time is gonna be theta dot dot plus half of this part to theta multiplied by derivative of theta with respect to time which is going to theta now. Yes. Um, e r squared is supposed to be the same thing. And that k2 r squared. Yes, it should be. Thanks. K2 r squared. Yep, I just... And the right hand side is going to be zero because if I differentiate this with respect to time, the right hand side is going to be zero because it's constant. So we, I have theta dot from both sides, I can cancel out. <coughs> so now I can cancel out this to half as well. So what I will get is going to be m r squared plus j naught times take the double back plus k2 r squared plus k1 times uh, I can cancel out this two as well. So this is the equation of motion and natural frequency is going to be whatever is the position of theta dividing by coefficient of theta data dot and the S square is going to be K2 R square plus K1 dividing by M R square plus J. Here I replaced X by R theta. You you could replace theta by x dividing by r. You, you will get equation as a function of x double dot, but the natural frequency is going to be the same. The, the coefficient might be a little bit different, but the natural frequency is going to be the same. And one more thing about this problem. Since we don't have any damping in this equation, we can use the energy method. Even if I ask, if we had uh, damping on the system and I ask you to solve this problem with the energy method, the question was wrong right because energy method is just applied if we have a uh, conservative system when the, the energy on the other system is not kind of anticipated or changed. Um, question on the board, real quick. You have a V naught equals one millimeter for number two. Should it be measured? Okay. Yeah. Sorry for that.
Any question about this? Uh, let me go on a problem number two for quick. Uh, problem number two. for this system, the natural frequency is going to be S square root of whatever is the coefficient of uh, X dividing by the M. So M is 10, I will get 16.2 times 10, uh, 1000 dividing by 10, I will get 40.2 radian per second. Calculate the undamped natural frequency. This is the undamped natural frequency. Um, we were asked to find the damping ratio. 
So the damping ratio is going to be zeta, which is going to be C divided by CC. C is 1, 1 kilogram per second. I should find CC. CC is always 2m omega n. m is 10 kilogram omega n is 40.2. I will get 20 times 40.2, I will get 8.04. So zeta would be 1 dividing by 8.04, it's 0 0.0012. And the damped natural frequency, the damped natural frequency is omega d, which is going to be omega n times 1 minus theta squared. Mm -hmm. Since this uh, damping ratio is very really small number, 1 minus this square root is going to be very, a number very close to the 1. So if I multiply by 40.2, I will get and um, the frequency very close to natural frequency. And we were asked to check if the system is over damped, under damped, or critical damp. So since zeta is between 0 and 1, it's point zero zero. Uh, we can say that um, it's an under damp. And for the last part, we were given with the initial condition. At time zero, x is one meter, and there is no velocity for the initial velocity. So for an under damp system, the response of the system we derive that it's going to be uh, x e minus zeta uh, omega n times t sine of omega d t plus p. And what are the value of the x and uh, p? x would be a square root of a square plus p square. A is equal to x naught, P equal to uh, V naught plus zeta omega and x naught dividing by omega D. So A is going to be equal to 1 because A, x naught is 1. V naught equals to 0. Uh, Omega n is very close to the uh, omega d. I can cancel out these two. It's going to be zeta times x naught. It's going to be 0 0.0012. So x is going to be uh, a square root of these two. 1 plus this square, I would get the number 1.0006. It's very close to 1, I assume it's, it's 1. Um, what is B equal? Okay. Say it again. What is B? B. I just, I was equal at the end. Uh, zeta times x naught, point zero zero one two. Because x naught is 1, zeta is zero zero one. So, I got 1.0006, I can assume it's almost 1. So 1 times this, let's see. And phi, if you remember, phi was tangent inverse of A over B. A is 1, B is this guy. Here you get 89 
point ten. It's almost ninety degrees. Wait, I don't. What is phi equal to? Uh, tangent inverse. Okay. You remember this? You uh, just look at your notes. This is a general response for an uh, underdone system. This is the amplitude of the system X. How can we find A and B? They are given here, and phi is the tangent inverse of A over B. A is 1, B is this. If you use your calculator, you will get 89.9. So x is 1, I just put 1. e power minus 0 0.0012 times 40. I ask you to find the amplitude at time 10, 10 seconds. So t is going to be 10 sine of 40.2 times 10 plus pi over 2. I didn't plug in 90 because the angles are in length. So it's going to be 0 0.61 to 6 meters. So the location of distance after 10 seconds is going to be 0 0.6 meter on the right hand side. Uh, of the origin. Any question on this? Do you want me to go through number three? Otherwise, I will go through the number, number four. Do you want me to go through? Okay. Like 
reaction cost that and mass for a system for a simple spring damper uh, and mass system like this such that the amplitude of this system is less than one millimeter. So the equation of motion for this system is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero. Since this system must be under that, so the response of this system is going to be like this. Um, I just wrote that. X of t is going to be uh, x. E minus zeta omega m t sine of omega dt plus phi, where x equals to s square root of a square plus p square, a is x naught, p is uh, e naught plus Zeta omega and x naught omega d. And phi is the tangent given of a over d. This is the response for a system which is um, under that. So the amplitude is going to be this. So we would like this guy is less than uh, one millimeter. So a squared plus b squared must be, so the maximum is going to be one millimeter. So I'm just writing that. So x must be equals to x not squared plus this is squared. Uh, v not plus zeta omega n. x not the square dividing by omega d square. One minute. One minute means it must be less than. Let me use the less than. All right, let me just plug in the number. x not is given as zero, there is no initial deflection. V naught is 10 millimeters per second, which is 0 0.01 meter per second. So this time is zero, uh, this time is zero, so this time is gone. So I will get V naught squared divided by omega d squared. Uh, it's coming out of x square root v naught dividing by omega d, which is going to be point zero one dividing by omega d must be less than point zero one. So omega d must be greater than point zero one dividing by point zero zero one. Omega d must be greater than ten radian per second. This is the criteria that I should satisfy to have an amplitude that's not ten, uh, one minute. So x naught is zero, it's gone. V naught, I'll keep it. This term x naught is zero, it's gone. So V naught is square dividing by omega d is square. So it's come out, out of the square x, uh, mean not divided by omega. So 
So let me just plug in omega d. Omega d is omega n multiplied by 1 minus zeta squared. It must be greater than 10. So I, s I s for both sides, I will get omega n squared. 1 minus zeta squared must be greater than 100. Omega n is k over m. 1 minus zeta squared must be greater than 100. Um, or k is going to be, must be greater than 100 times m dividing by 1 minus zeta squared. So let's see what should be satisfied. Um, there is limitation on the mass. Mass must be between 10 and 15 kilograms. What else? It's only. Okay. And it should be. System must be under that, otherwise the response of the system is going to be different. So zeta must be between 0 and 1. It cannot be greater than that. Over that. Um, so I peak, isolate zeta equals to 0 0.01. You can choose any other value. So you, you, you will not get the same answer as long as we satisfy the design criteria of the we are good. So I assume I choose zeta equals to point zero zero one. It satisfies this condition. So if zeta equals to uh, point, zero, point zero one, then k over m is going to be greater than 100 times n dividing by 1 minus 0 0.001, I will get um, Just pick m any value between 10 and 15. I pick 12 and m equals to 12. Then k must be greater than 100 times 12. k must be greater than 1200. Um, I pick k equals I choose 1500 newton per So k is here, M is here. The only thing that I need to find is uh, C. So, Zeta is 0 0.01. So, Zeta is C over CC. C is going to be 2m um, omega m or 2m times s square root of k over m 2 s square root of k times m m is 12 k is 15 100 uh, it's going to be 2 times S square root of eighteen thousand. Did 
we can find CC. I don't have the value for that. So whatever you got here for this, you just plug in by 1 and point zero 0.01 to get the value for the damping constant. So this is how you can design your system such that it's going to have a damping uh, an amplitude less than 1 millimeter. Any question on this design problem? No question. All right, let's move on to last problem. system like this. We have one degree of freedom system like this. We were asked to derive the equation of motion for a system like uh, for this one. So this is the, this is when they have a spring constant of k. This has three times k. So k, I mean, the idea that k would be they have the same magnitude, so these two things are the to each other. And this one has three times greater than the other spring. So we would like to derive the equation of motion for this system. So since we have a damp uh, we have damping here you cannot use you cannot use the energy method to derive the equation of motion for this system. But you can find the equivalent mass by using the techniques that you have learned in this class. So the, 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 the kinetic energy if I assume that the location of mass m is shown by x if this moving, it's gonna rotate this rigid by the and uh, this rigid by is gonna rotate by the angle of theta. So the kinetic energy for this system is coming from this mass and this rigid body. The kinetic energy due to the uh, motion of this mass is gonna be m half of m times velocity of that plus half of j naught or i whatever. Uh, the mass moment of inertia 
multiplied by the angular velocity of the visible. So this is how you can derive the kinetic energy for a rotational uh, rigid body. J, J naught times omega squared. And you can see if you move mass m by, by the magnitude of the x, it's going to rotate by theta. So this guy, which is going to be the x, would be r times theta. It's going to be l times theta. So the radius times the angle of theta is going to give you the amount of the friction. So l. x would be equal to L theta. Theta would be x dividing by L. It's going to be a half of M x dot squared plus half of J naught times x <coughs> squared dividing by L. L squared. So the kinetic energy of this system must be equal to half of M equivalent multiplied by X dot squared. How can I replace these two by something like this? So the equivalent, yes. Theta dot is gonna be x dot dividing by L. Yeah, sorry. It must be x dot x dot. We just start from that equation we derive for the velocity. So I'm looking for this M equivalent. What should I replace for this term? Then I can remove this visible body and this mass. So you can cancel out this extra dots from both sides, this half. So then M equivalent would be the summation of this part, which is going to be M plus J naught dividing by L squared would be M equivalent. J naught is 112 m l square l square is 2f it's going to be 4 divided by 12 1 over 12 m l square i can cancel out these two this is m2 M2. This is M2. This is M1. M2 is the mass of the prison body. There, the link. So it's going to be M1 plus M2 dividing by 2. So this C. Uh, at the value of C is going to be 3K. So I have I have four parallel spring parallel. I can add them up 4K. So I can just replace these four springs with one 4K. Now I have two series. One over k equivalent would be one over four uh, k plus one over three k. It's gonna be um, square k squared four k plus three k. It's gonna be seven dividing by twelve k or k equivalent. Of the total. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. How did you get, so you have back your 112 m squared 2L. How did you get it 2L? Oh, because 
And two because L, it's the total length. Big L is two little L's. Oh. It's a length of the length. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I got it now then. So if I just flip this 12 over 7 give up times k. Now let me replace this with the spring 12 over 7 times k. Now I have a simple mass and a spring system with this equation of motion. M equivalent x double dot plus cx plus k equivalent times x equals to zero. So omega m k equivalent divided by m equivalent. Equals to 12 over 7 k divided by m1 plus m2 divided by 3. This is part B. This is a fre natural frequency of the this system. Um, again, you cannot use the energy method to derive this system of equation because you have um, a test which dissipate the energy. Any questions so far? So the last part is uh, part three. What value of C should be selected to have critically damp system? So if you want to have a critically damp system, zeta must be equal to one. So C must be equal to CC. So CC is going to be two. M equivalent, whatever is the term of the M, multiplied by omega M. So C would be equals to C, C equals to 2 times M1 plus M2 divided by 3 multiplied by, uh, it's going to be 2 S square root of K equivalent times M equivalent. Omega m is a square root of k over m, which is the <coughs> of the m. It's going to be 2 a square root of k equivalent, which is 12 over 7 times k multiplied by m equivalent, which is m1 plus m2 divided by m. If, if in this problem C value has that, this value you are going to have the critical down system. Uh, why is it a 1? Is that this critical down? Yes, I mean if you, just uh, let me refresh your mind. If the system is under that, zeta must be between 0 and 1. If zeta is 1, it's a critical gap. And if it's zeta greater than 1, we have over that. Depending on which type of response you are looking for, you can design the zeta. was the response of 
a screen mass system which is under harmonic excitation. So we have one degree prism of system which has simple mass and a spring and it's under harmonic excitation. What would be the response of the system? We derive the response of the system. We talked about the resonance. When the frequency of excitation is equals to natural frequency of the system, then we are going to have the resonance system. We just assume a particular solution like this, x cosine of omega t, something close to this function, and so we just plug in and we got um, the x value. We talked about the amplification factor, which is uh, k divided by the aesthetic deflection. Aesthetic deflection was defined by uh, F naught dividing by K. So these are the things that we covered so far. of the particular solution is equals to a static deflection, which is going to be F naught divided by K. If I don't have this term, if I apply F naught, the amount of deflection is going to be delta, F divided by K. So we call it a static deflection. So this ratio is going to be something like this. It just plot X over delta aesthetic as a function of R, we got something like this. If R is less than 1, the equation is going to uh, vary in this form. And when R equals to 1, it means when omega is equals to omega n, when the frequency of the excitation force is very close to the natural frequency of the system, then we are going to have the huge x. But the static is not going to change with the omega, so we are going to have x. Goes to the infinite value. So you are going to have a failure on your dynamic system, because it's going to oscillate. Uh, with the amplitude of the So it's very dangerous uh, 
case for a dynamic system. So we would like to avoid uh, any excitation with the frequency close to the natural frequency. And if R is greater than 1, you can see you will get the negative value. So the amplitude, uh, this is the harmonic ex, uh, excitation for this is the response. So since you will get negative here, these two would be, they, they are going to have 180 degree uh, reflecting phase. So they are going to be out of phase with, by the angle of 180. Because you will get negative value here. Negative value is x cosine of omega t plus 180. So this is what we covered so far. Um, now I would like to add a damping to the system. So my system is going to change kx plus cx dot. I would like to see what's going to be the response of the system. Um, just make sure that you follow the steps because uh, if you lost the track, I mean, you cannot understand what's, how can we get the response of the system. Um, so I have we have the same system except this time the response uh, we have the damping on our system, we would like to find the response of this system. Again, the equation of motion is going to be mx double dot plus kx plus cx dot plus kx equals to f naught cosine of omega t. If you have a, a differential equation like this, since it's not homogeneous, since this part is not zero, we are going to have two parts of solution. The homogeneous part plus particular part. So so if you have under that system, the homogeneous part is going to die uh, it's going to die after a while. But this one is going to be the steady uh, state solution. This part is going to die if you have the under damp uh, system. Um, For the homogeneous, you know how to find that. I don't go through that here. I just put it on the particular solution. And then at the end, I will add them up to get the, the, the uh, overall solution. So we look at the right hand side of the equation and we assume that the particular solution has this form, x cosine of omega t minus p. We assume this is the particular solution, we find x and p by, by plugging this solution on the original equation. So, X dot, x dot would be negative um, x omega sine of omega t minus p x double dot would be negative x omega square cosine of omega t minus p now just plug in x Double that by that expression, x dot by that equation, and x is going to be this one. 
So since all three terms they have x, I'm just take x out of the parentheses. I will get um, negative m for the first term, omega is square of cosine of omega t minus t. Second term has sine term negative uh, c times omega sine of omega t minus t. The last term is k times this, k times cosine of omega t minus t. This must be equal to f0 cosine of omega t minus t. If you plug in this particular solution, you should get, you should satisfy the uh, original equation of motion. I have cosine of omega t here, cosine of omega t is here. I can just add this to coefficient. I will get x equals to k minus m omega squared times cosine of omega t minus p minus um, c omega sine of omega t minus t.
from here I can find x. To satisfy this equation, x must be equal to f naught dividing by distance. k minus m omega squared cosine of t plus c omega sine of t from this. If I want to have this equation equal to 0, x, which is going to be the amplitude of my particular solution cannot be equal to 0 because I know that I have a particular solution. So this term must be equal to 0. So if this term equals to 0, I will get k minus m omega squared sine of t minus c omega cosine of t equals to 0. So I can write sine of t dividing by cosine of t equals to, if I move this to the other side, uh, c omega k minus m omega squared. And sine of t dividing by cosine of t is going to be tangent of t. So if, for the particular solution, the tangent of this angle equals to this, and the amplitude of the particular solution is equals to this, then this particular solution can satisfy my original equation, and it's going to be the particular solution for this system. We are going to have a discussion about, we should discuss about this uh, particular solution on Thursday. It's very important things on vibration of the system with uh, damping. Any questions? Continue on. Okay. 